Okay, what's your name and how long have you been in school? My name is Christian Lopez. I've been in schools here in the U.S. since uh, 20, 2018. And do you mind if I ask where you're from? From Honduras. Honduras, okay. Um, okay, a couple of questions here. Can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? Uh, the main uh, way in which I see peace is just absence of war, absence of violent conflict, and um, basically just that. Okay. Is peace important to you and why? It is important because um, uh, I am. We are. We are all affected by the having the opposite of peace. Whenever there's conflict, it affects everyone in society. Uh, whether you're involved in the conflict personally or not, um, you're negative, negatively affected. So okay. it does. Okay. And. What can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? Um, I think in a, as a member of society, the best thing I can do is educate myself about um, social conflicts and what um, causes um, the absence of peace, uh, what causes conflict, what causes war and violence. And by educating myself about it, I can um, not only promote Peace, but also uh, um, make a good argument for it and um, avoid uh, many of the common pitfalls that people, you know, fall into when arguing when regarding social uh, okay. conflict. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, what is your name? Uh, Andrew Wood, and I've been in school. This is, I think, my fourth year now. Is that I'm currently in school. Okay. I've only been at the U, though, for the past semester. Past semester, okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I think peace, obviously, like, I wouldn't exactly say a lack of conflict. That's what first comes to mind, but... I'd say more along the lines of, uh, peace. Um, I'd say probably people trying to get along and trying to compromise. I'd say is probably the best way to put it. Okay. Uh, like not seeking out the conflict that is probably going to end up happening, but instead trying to do their best to mitigate it and be friendly. Okay. All right. And is peace important to you? And why? Uh, yeah, peace is very important to me, and mostly because I don't like conflict. <laughs> I do my best to avoid it where I can, and where I can't, I do my best to mitigate it. And uh, not to say I roll over or anything and let people walk all over me, but uh, I don't. I, I don't think that uh, extensive. Uh, an unnecessary conflict is is a good thing at all. And final question is, what can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? Mm. Um, well, I've always, I think just by doing my best to, uh, let's see how to put it. Like, like being an example and trying to get other people to like not I need to like be friendlier and nicer and work together more uh, I don't think I could really personally don't feel like I can do much on a large scale uh, but on the smaller scale in my personal life and with the people I surround myself with I think I can I can help them okay. All right. thank you Chandler thank you okay what's your name my name is Kimball, I'm 24 years old, and yeah. Okay, all right, uh, Kimball, can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? That's a good question. Um, I think 
piece isn't necessarily obtainable um, by humans, okay. if I had to put it. <clears throat> I just think due to the human condition um, that our inherent nature piece is just not obtainable. obtainable. And um, I think that the only way global peace would ever be achieved is if there was one singular um, leader um, or deity that was running the whole thing. And the only, uh, not on a local level, it depends on how local you want to get, if you're talking in a community, um, that can vary. So, but is, is, so is peace important to you then? Um, I think peace, I think personal peace is important. I don't necessarily think that we should spend all our time and resources on trying to accomplish peace in the world. But I think it's important to have personal peace. Um, and what can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? I think the best way I would be able to promote my kind of peace is by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I think whether you believe in him or not, his ideology and teachings are a great blueprint one person to be able to align their life to my peace. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, okay. So peace without God is unattainable. Okay. Okay, what's your name? My name is Lucendi Aguilera. Okay, and um, are you a student at the U or? So I graduated from the University of Utah in spring of 2021, and I majored in behavioral science. Okay. All right. Um, first question is, uh, can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? Yeah, so what peace would look like to me on a global level um, would be, I, I would say respect, respect towards other people, towards every everyone different cultures um yeah i think respect is the big one okay what about locally um i think it would go the same for for local i think just being respectful towards other people and uh, taking in consideration other people's beliefs and cultures okay um, is in, is peace important to you, and why? Yes, peace is important to me. Um, it's how we, I think it's a way of communicating with other people and getting along, and um, yeah, I would say that's a big, big factor, I think, for everyone. Okay. Um, what can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? respectful I think being respectful to other people um, all types of people all groups different religion cultures um, I think that's the main focus of yeah, showing peace to others okay perfect thank you okay can you tell me your name and like your major a little bit about you uh, my name is Sheena, and my major is in English, and I'm hoping to minor in American Indian Studies. Um, I'm a mom of five kids. I'm married. <laughs> I'm from Kentucky, Anna, originally, and a uh, former foster kid. Okay. All right. Let's see. My questions are not pulled up here. I apologize. Okay. Um, can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? Globally and locally. It, it, I think it works either way, but working together, 
to communicate more, allowing for peace. Um, like we've discussed in our class and everything that we have so many different cultures and so many people are clashing. If we could learn how to communicate with everyone despite the culture differences, I think we could have a better chance at peace locally and globally. And then, is peace important to you and why? I think it's important to everyone. <laughs> um, I, for me, yeah. Um, because I, I'm not a big fan of conflict or violence, and I think without peace we have more of that. Okay. And what, what do you think you can do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? Um, learning more about different um, countries, different cultures, learning more about how to effectively communicate with everyone and you know learn how to get along with everyone despite our various differences learning how to work with those differences rather than against them okay all right thank you <laughs> okay can you tell me your name uh my name is jamal fakru okay and where are you from uh i'm from kuwait and i also grew up in the uk okay okay and how long have you been here in the u.s uh, since January 2018, so that will make it almost four years completed. Okay, and how long have you been at the U? Uh, pretty much same time, that's why I came here. Okay, and you're majoring in? Accounting. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple questions here. Uh, can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? For me, peace looks like an end of wars. Because I feel like that is the biggest significant enemy of peace in today's world. And, in, you know, and it's very obvious why war is happening. There's a lot of money that goes in. And it's a multiplier and a lot, of, a lot more money comes out. So on a, you know, on a global level, it's definitely end of war. Um, on local levels, I love seeing... Uh, people happy as a result of peace. I feel like they work simultaneously in both ways. Happiness brings peace and peace brings happiness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's very important for the community that you're in to allow, to facilitate the environment for people to express themselves as much as they can, as much as they want to. Okay, all right, thank you. And then, okay. Um, is peace important to you, and why? Uh, peace is, is very important. Um, and it allows for the room to self-express yourself, uh, for self-expression. Um, I feel like a lot of the times, there's, when people think of peace, they usually t think like non-violence, but you see all across social media, across mm -hmm. movies, across... Um, just like implicit and explicit everyday interactions where you can't truly have peace when there's like a certain image that's being perpetuated. Um, you know, growing up, like in movies, you see, you know, Middle Easterners usually are the enemy. You see Middle Easterners, um, even like certain features, like dark hair, you see like in Lion King. Uh, for instance, Scar himself, dark hair, dark features, you know, alluding to, um, you know, foreign kind of, um, kind of foreign attributes and, you know, growing up, it's like, okay, how can I feel good about myself when the, you know, the images that are perpetuated that share my features usually have negative connotations to the storyline. So I think it's very important for everyone to realize that whoever they are is perfectly acceptable and that there should be room for self-expression and explore that creativity within. Yeah. Wow. I never thought about that before. No. Um, what can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? Oh, just be kind. Be kind. Be happy. I read, I think, somewhere yesterday, the odds of us being like born and alive is 1 in 400 trillion. So there's, you shouldn't waste time kind of perpetuating your negativity onto other people. And I always think, you know, like there is part of it, like parents influence, doing it without knowing. And so I think education is a very, very big factor. 
everyone should approach everything with with an open mind and that way we can better ourselves and become like better rounded people so we can have different perspectives like i consider myself lucky for growing up in these different areas because i have these different perspectives so that when i enter into a new culture or when i enter into a formal culture that i've been in i'm able to see things differently and appreciate more what i've been taught in another culture and also appreciate the culture that i'm in as well okay. and so that way i feel like just being kind being generous and having an open mind is very important in like progressing forward okay all right well thank you thank you very much okay um if you would like to state your name and um sure. a little bit about yourself sure so i'm gunsene berik uh that's a turkish name <laughs> and i was born and raised in turkey and um now, by now, much of my life I've lived here in the U.S. and um, and I'm a professor of economics in the uh, at the U of U. And uh, I, I guess started out with a joint appointment in gender studies and uh, and economics. And but the last twelve years I've been uh, fully uh, staff in the economics department. And um, so I do have, I guess, uh, sort of international background a little bit. Uh, I mean, I, I am very much uh, uh, in tune with all the news <laughs> in the world about, um, about you know, various uh, conflicts and various uh, struggles for justice. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other than that, I, I don't know what, what would you like to know? That's good, I'll just go ahead and ask you the questions. Okay. Just a little bit about your background. Um, because how you answer the questions is, you know, obviously you're, you're including your background, what you know. Sure. Um, so can you tell me what peace looks like to you on a global and local level? I've, um, so, um, so peace uh, essentially is, um, I'll preface this, okay? So peace, I think, is a way of reconciling different conflicts whether globally or locally. Uh, and uh, so basically we have peace if there is, you know, uh, uh, no conflict, okay, or no appearance of conflict, okay. Um, however, uh, the lasting peace, uh, so I will distinguish here, the lasting peace I think will has to have uh, equality and justice as its components. So uh, peace, therefore, uh, to be lasting, has to have, uh, have to have achieved equality and, and or has made, pro has made progress to it, towards equality and, and ju justice. Now let me give you a few examples here. So, so I mean, in the U.S. context, for example, right, uh, we have, for centuries, we had racial injustice. Native Americans, but also uh, clearly against uh, African Americans, uh, we had that for centuries, and and uh, and some of that was sort of a, had a bit of a semblance of perhaps uh, we sort of reached a level of peace, perhaps with the civil rights movement in the 1960s, and uh, uh, prior to that you know, the kind of the subduing of dissent or resistance was by domination by the white, uh, whites. And so, so we had, you know, Jim Crow segregation and, uh, but it obviously under the surface, it was always conflictual, right? So, uh, and it sort of erupted uh, frequently. So since the civil rights movement, we have maybe less of an eruption. We have maybe, you know, we're maybe more at peace in terms of the racial uh, racial uh, relations, but um, but we're still struggling towards justice. And and unless we have you know, and the Black Lives Matter movement, for example, right now is showing that we are not at the point of justice, and that's why it's erupting, right? So and therefore, you know, we don't have peace in the in terms of ra in racial terms, and so so we need you know, justice to achieve uh, peace in that arena. 
Internationally, I'm sort of thinking like the Palestinian problem, for example. It's an ongoing, ongoing, um, uh, ongoing struggle, and 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 there won't be any peace in the Middle East unless there's justice for the Palestinian people, and to you know to make sure that basically they have a land that they can claim their own and and uh, coexist. I mean, whatever. Right. Looks like uh, so, so that's one. I mean, uh, the other. Uh, I mean, the, I guess they could talk about class, peace in class terms, like in the U.S. context in the post World War II period until 1980. Uh, capital and labor, that is the working class versus the you know employers. We had a bit of a kind of a peace in in terms of industrial peace, right? So uh, the wage increases were relatively rapid and profits increased and wages increased and so there was a kind of a industrial peace at work but after 1980 with globalization that peace was just dis disrupted and 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 of course uh, uh, then you have again the domination of the employers since then so so that there is really no peace industrial peace anymore mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, labor capital so, so I guess my, 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 so peace is something we, it's not like a static thing that we achieve it once and for all and then we're kind of okay and we're done with this and we're taking care of it. It's always going to be, if peace is achieved through domination, then it's likely to erupt again. Um, and, uh, you know, conflicts are going to erupt. But if it's peace is to be lasting, it has to involve justice. I mean, the, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the Bob Marley song. Okay, so it sort of goes, okay, equal rights and justice, and then it says, I don't want, I don't want no peace without justice. And I, so I would just kind of echo that. Yeah, okay. It's <laughs> a really good point. Um, I didn't think about that. Okay. Um, is peace important to you, and why? Yeah, I mean, of course it's important to me, and it's because of the reason the reasons I basically mm -hmm. highlighted, you know, because I care about social justice. I don't want people to be oppressed on the basis of their social identities, uh, whether race, ethnicity, class, um, or nationality, right? So, um, so to achieve, so because I care about justice, I care about peace. Mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the answer. Okay. And then um, what can you do in your lifetime to promote your kind of peace? <laughs> so I would uh, definitely uh, stay active, and I'm active, you know, politically active in terms of, uh, in terms of the electoral process, right? And, you know, in a way, I have to be informed first, and I have to be uh, politically active to make sure that uh, injustices are not legislated through Congress and justices are promoted through legislative acts mm -hmm. and uh, I mean take the uh, take the they're now voting in a huge military spending budget and actually they voted I think they voted uh, a larger sum than what the Pentagon was asking so and they're just so in the, uh, in the uh, under the influence I mean of the uh, Military industrial complex in the country, right? But what does that do? It takes away all the funds that could be used for all these programs that could improve, reduce uh, inequality and promote justice in the country. And, and we have, we are just, so I would basically be alert on that, fight against that, and, and sort of basically through the political process, uh, you know, fight for voting rights. I mean, issues that. Thank you so much. All right, I hope this is coherent. <laughs> so as you can see, there are so many different um, opinions and thoughts that are um, given about peace and the future of peace and how we can change it. Um, it's good to 
to get other people's perspectives. I mean, these are people that I'm around on a daily basis and uh, that you're around. You're around different, different types of people and even people that you think that you understand, um, you may not. So it's good to have that open communication about peace. Um, Jamal went, said he went home and was talking to his girlfriend about it and asked her the same questions and wanted to get her perspective. So I think when we have an open dialogue <clears throat> about peace and <clears throat> how we can change it, we are better able to see our future, see what we want in life and how we want to live it. This also does determine <clears throat> how we vote and um, the things that we choose to do with our time. Um, the beginning of the book talks about, um, oh, part one of the book is the promise of peace, the problems of war. And then the book goes on into several different parts. And all of it in between is <clears throat> war, um, negotiations, processes in uh, positive peace and a negative peace, and then uh, some theories on solutions um, in peace. And all these things combined <clears throat> um, helped me to understand the, um, the complexity of what peace is. It's more than just <clears throat> a word that that says um, that it's just you know it's not just peace it's not just like a, a um, it's not a flat word to me peace is a an uphill climb and sometimes a down and um, I think that when we are able to recognize that there are, um, like Dr. Barrick said, some justices do need to happen in order for peace to happen. Um, when we recognize these things and things are brought up like the Black Lives Matter, um, we're able to say, okay, this group here that I have not recognized has not had peace. In order to have a more um, a more civil society. We need to uh, acknowledge and work together with these things. And I think that once we do that on a, in our own communities, in our own societies, we vote and we are active in our communities, um, then we're able to better have opinions with our leaders and things that we choose um, as far as <clears throat> how we want to maybe carry it throughout um, the global world. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad I took this class. I was able to um, grow in my, in, my, in my thoughts and able to process things a little bit better. And um, so thanks for watching.